welcome everyone to the 2020 Lhotse Special and Annual General Meeting. Uh, as you've gathered, uh, this is a new way of doing things. Um, we're guaranteed to have a few gremlins um, in, the, uh, in the presentation. We did practice uh, for several hours last night and uh, we thought we got them all out. So please be patient, uh, particularly with me. I will try and look up every once in a while because I, I'm reading from my notes and I'm looking at this little laptop uh, iPad and uh, it is a bit strange to be uh, doing a presentation like this. Um, so to begin, um, we sort of went over this, but we'll mention it several times in our talk. Um, we're happy that you can join us for the annual meeting and there's three ways to communicate tonight. One is the chat window. You can use the chat box to put messages out to everyone participating tonight. Uh, two, uh, raise your hand. This is for questions you want to ask or comments you would like to make specific to motions, business and topics tonight. Please put your hand up using the icon on your screen during the discussion period for a motion or during the question and answer session at the end of the meeting and we'll ask to voice it live just as you would in person by unmuting and turning on your video. Some of you may not be able to use your video function but we certainly have the audio capability. The final way of uh, communicating with us tonight is the question and answer window. This is for questions you have about navigating the meeting or for questions that may be better answered by phone or email outside the meeting tonight. If you wanna send a private message to someone else attending the meeting, you will need to do that in the normal way you would message them outside the webinar. And otherwise with your cell phone or uh, on a text. So uh, we'd like to uh, begin. Uh, this uh, slide is just to remind us all why we're here tonight. Um, next slide, please. I would like to welcome you uh, to the meeting uh, on behalf of the board. And again, thank you for joining us online today and supporting the organization. We would like to acknowledge the land and waters in which our association exists in the territory of the Anishinaabe Nation of Treaty 3, as well as the Métis who have traditional ties to this territory. Just a, a couple of housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, while we have done a couple of webinars, holding our AGM virtually is a whole new experience for all of us and you included. For those of you attending your first Zoom webinar, there are a couple of basics we want to tell you about. And again, I'm sort of repeating this so that you get a chance to understand how this works. For the most of the meeting, your sound will remain muted, but when you have a question, raise your hand electronically and we will send you a prompt to unmute so everyone can hear you. Then you will be muted again. That'd be a, a nice function to have at the, uh, at the supper table when the grandchildren are over. Um, there is another way you can ask questions by clicking on the question and answer tab and typing in your question. You can do that at any time during the meeting. Questions will be answered during the question and answer period at the end of the meeting, unless it is a comment or question for discussion during the presentation of a motion. The chat function is also available, as we said, but please don't use it for questions or comments you want discussed during the meeting. Uh, and when it comes to voting on motions, you will see a poll pop up on your screen where you can choose yes or no to support the various motions. And we are recording the meeting and we will be posting it on our web website. Um, we will also uh, uh, announce the uh, uh, polling results immediately after the poll has been taken. So just be patient with us. It takes about 30 seconds or so, and you'll see the, uh, the poll pop up. Uh, so to begin, uh, I have been very fortunate uh, to work with a great group of individuals on your board and staff who have made my role as your president a pleasure and a privilege. It has been great to work with all of them and to learn from them. I have completed my term as your president, but will remain on the board. Uh, this is our agenda, and if you, you've seen this slide for a while already. Uh, there is one small change, and that is the amendment to our bylaws that allow us to, uh, to have this Zoom meeting. We hope to get to the agenda in a timely fashion, and we'll have time for questions at the end of the meeting. Before we get into the business of the meeting, we would like to get an idea of how many people joined us tonight. And this is our first chance to use the poll function. We know how many registered, but we also know many of you are watching this with one or more people. So here is our first poll. And if you could uh, choose one of the options, whether you're uh, one other person, two other people watching with me, three or four or five, 
um, that will give us an idea about how many people are, are with us tonight. I'm just watching the numbers climb here. I'll okay. give it a few more seconds while people participate. <clears throat> Like we said, it takes a bit of time with this electronic lag, but you've got a beautiful picture of uh, taken by Tom Thompson of the fall colors uh, over Lake of the Woods. Okay, I think everyone that's going to enter as closing the poll and there's the results. Thank you very much, everyone. It seems that it's working, so off we go. Uh, next slide, please, Diane. The Canada Not-for-Profit Corporations Act permits members' meetings to be held by electronic means only if permitted by the association's bylaws. Loud says current bylaws do not permit this. The directors believe it is in the best interests of the association to have meetings by electronic means available for future members' meetings. Uh, and given the situation, I think it's a, a prudent thing to have. The bylaw amendment was included in your notice of meeting for today, and we have it on the next slide. So here's the uh, first part where I have to figure out what I'm doing. So I'm gonna call for a motion that bylaw number one of the corporation is hereby amended by adding the following provision as subsection 9.3, as it is displayed on your screen. And uh, I guess now we need a seconder. And so if someone could put their hands up, Don Parfit put his hands up the good way. We can I can see him on the screen. And um, I'd like to, if there's any discussion on the motion. Diane is monitoring uh, for any hands up and- uh, I'm seeing there, John Waterer's hand up. Is that for discussion on the motion, John? I think he was trying to second it probably. Okay. Yeah, there were a number of people who were yeah. I seconding. think we're good. I'm not seeing any hands up for conversation. So I'll open the poll. Thank you. Whoops. We've Are got we... results before the, yeah, before the voting. I... <laughs> Let's try that again. My apologies, everyone. I need to figure out how to reshare it. That would be a glitch. Hold on. Well, perhaps Hardy could explain. I got that. it. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that, everybody. So it says it says panelists can't vote. That's correct. That's all of us though. Okay, that's got right. It. Yeah, fair enough. Yep. That's fair. We all voted it on at the last board yeah, meeting. So we voted to put it on here. That's correct. Yeah. I think we need all the panelists to turn their cameras off for the time being. And I'm not seeing any more action happening. So I'm going to end the right now and there you go Hardy. Thank you very much everybody. So now we are uh, we can proceed. Uh, you received the minutes for the May 6, 2019 uh, poll, <clears throat> uh, AGM with your AGM notice and are there any additions or changes to the AGM minutes of May 6, 2019? Not Any hands up? No hands up. Okay. Uh, make I call for a motion that the minutes of the May 6, 2019 AGM as circulated be approved. Can I have a seconder? Just need somebody to put their hand up there. Got Todd Sellers, John Water. There we go. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All right, Diane, we're back to a poll. Okay, let me find the right one.
Uh, looks like um, some participants aren't voting, so I'm just going to wait another moment. Sure. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, next slide, please, Diane. Sorry, that didn't work. There we go. So for the last several years, we have spoken about change at this association. Some changes were significant, like our name change. Others were minor, but still important in positioning us as a leader and giving us a voice in many things that affect our lake lives. Even though we've made some changes, <clears throat> one thing remains consistent, and that is our responsibility and responsiveness to you, our members. Our committee structure reflects the topics that are important to our members, environment, government affairs, membership, and communication, and of course, finance. The committees and their members continue to strive to stay on top of the developing issues and ongoing concerns. This has become more challenging in the current area of fiscal restraint and devolving of government programs to the private sector. The COVID pandemic has made us even more challenging time for the association. We have moved to virtual meetings like this one, but we're able to continue our flagship program, including Lake Smart thanks to our great team of Lake Smart ambassadors and Shelley and Diane, our administrative team. Our greatest challenge continues to be maintaining our membership numbers and encouraging new and younger members. We're, we're not alone. It seems all membership driven organizations face the same challenge and it's one we continually strive to change. Our membership and communications committee has been concentrated on this for the past year and you will hear more about them in a moment. Even though the majority of our members are still in the 60 plus age group, we are working to expand our demographic profile by marketing to a larger audience using a variety of traditional media, social media platforms, and some specialized marketing tools. Many of these initiatives were begun in 2019 and we've continued to concentrate on them in 2020. We recently participated in a street, excuse me, a strategic planning session led by Robert Bullman, one of our past presidents, that led to some very productive discussions to address the future of this association. Of course, our most important means continues to be current members like you. I encourage everyone to share the love as they say and give a gift membership to a family member or friend. Please spread the message about the importance of becoming a member. Talk to your neighbors, family members and your local lake associations about Lautsa and the benefits of joining. We need to grow to remain a vibrant and robust organization. We now have just over 2,600 members. Although we, 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 excuse me, although we remain the largest association of this type in Ontario, our numbers have continued to decrease over the last several years. Our name change is an important part of the effort to engage the next generation of property owners, campers, boaters, sailors, and all those individuals and families that share our vision and love of the lake. With your help, we are looking forward to keep the organization growing and alive as we enter the 2020s. In a few minutes, we will be welcoming some new directors to your board. So on behalf of the board, I would like to extend a heartfelt farewell and thank you to Nancy Semmel Jarvie, who is retiring from the board after 10. That's right, 10 years of dedicated service. Thank you, Nancy. Her contribution and commitment to Laudsa, its programs and members have been significant and valuable. We are hoping that she is agreeable to remain as a consultant to the board. She will be missed for her insights, expertise, and experience. I would also like to thank Jean Ann Hallis, Christine Bolt, Jason Coro, Annika Gillis, and John Waterer for their service and contributions to the board. Now I'd like to call on Chris Semenchuk, our current finance chair, to present the 2019 financial statements. The current finance committee members are Chris Semenchuk, Carly Fike, Don Parfit, Dave Christie, and Jeff Rempel. Chris. Thanks, Hardy. We previously circulated a summary of the 2019 financial statements and the 2020 budget to all members with the invitation to the AGM. So I'll just present some highlights. 
We ended the year of 2019 with a surplus of $12,293, and the 2020 budget is planning a small surplus. In 2019, similar to prior years, as Hardy previously mentioned, we had reduced membership revenues and we continued to carefully manage all operations and program expenses. Comparing our balance sheet position at the end of the 2019 fiscal year to the prior year, the operating reserve increased by $1,420 and the environmental initiative and special projects fund was reduced by $10,786. As we previously informed you, we combined the restricted environment and tax funds into one fund, the restricted environmental initiative and special projects tax uh, fund or EISP, which I will call it from here on in. Member contributions are held in this fund with board approval required to use the funds and we report annually on this at the AGM. The EISP fund is used for planned future environmental initiatives and special projects that would not otherwise be viable within the operating budget. In 2019, our members contributed a total of $3,214 to the EISP. On the revenue side, our budget in 2019 was based on expected revenues of $270,465. Actual revenue totaled $256,593 and was below budget by $13,872. We exceeded our budget for royalties and interest, but we were below budget for membership and also cottage show revenues. We were also below budget for the Canada Summer Job Subsidy and the Lake Smart Program sponsorships. In our 2020 budget, we included a conservative estimate of membership revenue and continued focus on implementing strategies to increase membership. And in 2020, we planned to support the Lake Smart Program through partner donations or sponsorships versus government program support. On the expense side, overall 2019 expenses of $244,300 were below the 2019 budget by $31,837. Contributing factors include reduced AGM and cottage show expenses and reduced operating expenses, which included a deferral of the purchase of cyber insurance, reduced director and executive director travel, and also reductions in membership, communication, website, and Stripe fees. And we included similar assumptions when we were budgeting 2020 expenses and adjusted membership and communication expenses in conjunction with the reduced membership um, revenues. Going back to the EISP, uh, as previously mentioned, it includes member donations. And examples of projects that are funded by the EISP include addressing invasive species, environmental awareness initiatives, re research and sharing tax, government and legislative issues, as well as Lake Smart. In 2019, we transferred $14,000 from the EISP for four items listed on the slide, including the Watershed Forum, Lake Smart, updating of the septic brochure and updating of Lao Tzu's trade show display. In 2020, we budgeted a transfer of $10,100 for six items, including the watershed forum, upgrading, up, updating of the living green at the lake brochure, loud kids activity plan for the summer, both the Lao Tzu and the loud kid websites, and we included $5,000 to support development work on the mobile boat wash. And you'll hear more about that later in the environmental report. We will continue to pursue government and private sector sponsorships for environmental programs such as Lake Smart and the Boat Wash. But given the uncertainty around these programs, we continue to encourage member donations to the EISP fund and we'll seek appropriate approvals to transfer funds from the EISP 
to support relevant programs when needed. So in summary, our 2020 budget projecting a small surplus includes a very conservative estimate for membership fees and a planned transfer of $10,100 from the EISP fund. The assum these assumptions are included in the 2020 budget, but will continue to aggressively pursue revenues and closely manage expenses across all areas. I would now move that the 2019 financial report be accepted as presented. May I have a seconder? Uh, Nancy Selma Jarvie has seconded Nancy. it. And then I, if I could open it up to discussion and if you have any comments or discussion, if you could put your hand up, please. Seeing any. Okay. And on that, I will call for the question, please, Diane. And once again, you'll see the question on the uh, acceptance of financial report on your screen, and it's just a matter of voting. And I figured out how to let the panelists vote. Ah. We've still got people voting. I'll wait a few more seconds. And there's the results. Thank you, everyone. And I'll turn it back to Hardy. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, now it is time to move into our committee reports. And um, in the interest of time and because we weren't sure how this was all working, unfortunately, you were going to have to listen to me for yet again. And I will present the uh, reports on behalf of the committee uh, committees in the interest of time. Uh, your environment committee is co-chaired by Lucas King and Chelsea Lobson. Our current members of the committee include uh, Director Chris Semenchuk and members Jerry Beveridge, Becky Slater, Haley Anderson, John Waterer, Dave Hewlett, and the Lake Smart team, our three ambassadors. Lake Smart 2019 did not get off to the strongest of starts with funding questions looming over the program. It was certainly at risk. However, with work from our board and environment committee and strong support from a committed group of longstanding sponsors, the decision was made to continue our flagship program and to explore new means of funding for the future. In 2019, the Lake Smart program continued to grow from years previous, delivering over 900 dock kits across the watershed and traveling to such areas as Morrison and Schnarr Lake for the first time. The Lake Smart team also continued to grow our Loud Kids program, adding our second annual storm drain stenciling day and doing numerous day camp presentations. The returning team for 2019 continued to be strong ambassadors for Laudsa. They documented concerns over water quality, invasive species, and shoreline health. All of these things impact the ecosystem and the area that we all have come to enjoy. Moving forward, Laudsa will continue to prioritize ways to expand and fund the program to ensure we continue to share information across the watershed and provide leadership in environmental stewardship. The next slide highlights some of the activities of the Loud Sut Environmental Committee in 2019. And some of you may recognize pictures of yourself uh, at these various events. Uh, Metal Waste Day, the visit to the ELA Lakes, the forestry tour, um, and uh, stenciling the, uh, for the Loud Kids program. Moving into 2021, the Loud Sut Environment Committee is looking forward to three new initiatives to build on the foundation of our Lake Smart program. We are happy to announce that we are looking to hire a full-time environment coordinator that will expand the program of the Environment Committee and Laudsa in relation to protecting the watershed. And we're looking at this with a view that perhaps we'll build some partnerships with the Lake of the Water, Lake of the Woods Water S Sustainability Foundation and the uh, ELA. Uh, 
uh, to make this happen. Secondly, Lao Tzu will continue to move towards the purchase of a mobile boat wash unit that will promote clean, drain, dry best practices and provide a proactive approach to defending against invasive species in the future. This is something that hasn't been available in Northwest Ontario at all. And uh, I think is a real, uh, a real important step. And we're very excited about that. We already have great partnerships with this program with 89.5 The Lake, the radio station, and the Lacklu Campers Association has provided some funding as well, uh, which you see in that photo there. Turtle Beach Clothing has also given us a solid start to make this initiative come to life. Finally, we are looking to develop an invasive species monitoring program. For this, we will look to you, our membership, to volunteer to have a zebra mussel sampler tied to your dock or in the water in order to report back to this association about the potential development of zebra mussels in the basin. Government Affairs. <clears throat> your Government Affairs Committee is chaired by Director Don Parfit and current members of the committee include Directors Chris Semenchuk, Jackie Lowe, and past presidents Nancy Samuel Jarvie and Barry Baltison, as well as members Mona Brown and Bob Stewart. This slide is an overview of what keeps your Government Affairs Committee, committee busy and is fairly straightforward. It will also be very familiar to you from our government notes section in each issue of the area news. This committee works hard to stay on top of issues that are important to our members and to both inform, educate and facilitate. We do our best to meet with our MP and MPP as often as we can get on their calendars. Their time has been in high demand lately so our meetings are not as frequently frequent as we would like. Our lines of communication with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry are well developed. Local ministry staff are very responsive to our calls and emails and we, they do a great job of keeping us informed. Lao Tzu is also represented on two MNRF citizens committees who provide input to the ministry on forestry as well as fisheries. Uh, Garth Collier is involved in the forestry and John Waterer is involved on the fisheries uh, committees. We, would also we also monitor the Ontario Environmental Registry for items of interest or impact to our members. This is particularly important as we can watch for and share announcements of pending developments in the unorganized, unincorporated areas which in which residents may not hear of otherwise. Our best way of passing this information on to you is through our government notes in the area news, as well as our periodic e-news distribution, and of course, social media. Key topics that were followed in 2019 and we continue to follow in 2020 include highway twinning, four laning. Unfortunately, uh, there have been very little updates uh, on this and there's been very little movement. Uh, that we are aware of since the first public consultations were held in November, 2018. We did just recently uh, write to them all again, and we did receive acknowledgement of our letter <clears throat> from the Ministry of uh, Transport of Ontario with a promise of a more uh, comprehensive reply to come. Uh, so we haven't heard much from them uh, since then. Broadband and internet connectivity. This is always a topic of conversation when we meet with our MP. We will continue to push the topic whenever possible, but unfortunately we've seen no indication to date of this becoming a priority item federally. Flooding and land claims. Lao Tzu was instrumental in facilitating meetings of our members with the Ministry of Indigenous Affairs representatives so that questions and concerns could be voiced in person. We were successful in recruiting them to attend the 2019 Cottage Show as well. We do keep in touch with lead contacts for all three claims, but no updates are available at this time. Turtle Portage. Last year at this time, the future of Turtle Portage was looking very uncertain. However, thanks to all the Lao Tzu members and others that attended three public meetings, we facilitated with the MNRF and efforts of others beyond the meetings, its future is looking much more certain. Some significant repairs have already been completed with more planned for this fall. Turtle Portage's future is still uncertain as how its operation will be managed remains undetermined. Navigational aids. Last summer, we arranged for two navigational aids, inland waterways 
representatives, it's the Coast Guard, to meet with a small group of Lao Tse directors, members and staff. The meeting was very productive and resulted in some immediate improvement to some markers on the lake. We are in the process of striking a committee that will meet regularly, semi-annually or annually with these representatives. Hydro rates. This is a complex topic and I will brief, provide a brief summary, but uh, we're hoping that there'll be a, 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 a long discussion about this in the upcoming area news, thanks to Bob Stewart and his team. The Ontario Energy Board, OEB, began the move to fixed rates and the removal of the seasonal class in the 2013-2014 decision. And that has moved one step closer to reality with their, seven, with their recent announcement, September 17th. This will result in price increases for customers, some more than others, depending on where they live. The increases won't be immediate. They will be phased in, and that could take up to a decade. How this phasing will proceed and the bill impacts is the reason for the OEB's requirement that Hydro One submit an updated proposal or plan for implementation, ending the seasonal class by October the 15th. OEB has always maintained that fairness outweighs outweighs bill impact and the major factor in build amounts between year round seasonal is government subsidies over which they have no control nor a mandate to take into consideration when setting rates. This is primarily based on approved costs to provide the service. We will be including information on this in the next issue of the area news as I said and it will be easier to read and certainly easier to understand than the way I've presented it. So please stay tuned. Membership and communications. The membership and communication committee is currently chaired by myself. The current members of the committee include Chris Semenchuk, Jackie Lowe, Shelley Bougeau, Trevor Templeton, Garth Collier, and Nancy Samuel Jervie. On reviewing last year's presentation at the AGM, the challenges of the membership and communication committee remain unaltered. Thanks to a very active group of individuals and our past chair, Chris Bolt, we have made some advances in our three goals of retention, recruitment, and communication. Retention. We had a second call night in January and it was a great success. Your directors were making calls to lapsed members or to members who had forgot to renew. It was a great opportunity to speak to many of you that evening and listen to your concerns. It was a cold night out there, but one of my first calls was to a member in the Yukon who mentioned that it was minus 45, making our minus 20 seem balmy. Many of the initiatives we launched in 2019 have continued in 2020, albeit somewhat curtailed with COVID. The membership committee has been working to expand the range of events from the well-received ELA tours to include Green, Ent Green Adventures, a local tour company in Kenora. Another new member benefit is the Lao Tzu Reward Program. We have partnered with a number of businesses in the community to provide our members with an advantage when pur purchasing a product or obtaining a service. The recent area news details this program and how to access it. Recruitment. In the area of recruitment, the committee discussed a number of ideas to encourage individuals and families to join. The DOC renewal program enlisted the various area marinas to provide a letter from Laudsa as part of their DOC renewal package to encourage people to join Laudsa. The realtor program was streamlined so that the new cottage owner could easily be informed about the benefits of joining our organization. We lose a number of members every year after the cottage is sold and unfortunately, when that happens, they don't know about Loud Sun. So if you're in the unfortunate situation of having to sell your cottage, please let the new owners know about Loud Sun. With our ability to reach new members with email, we will be contacting new members to follow up on their membership and any questions they may have on a regular basis in the first year of membership. Communications. Further to our communication strategy, we have active accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now YouTube that provide notices of activities and issues in our watershed. Often these are issues that are later addressed in more detail in the area news, but these platforms allow for more rapid delivery on developing issues. The area news 
remains an outstanding journal where we can inform our members of concerns about the lake and share members' stories with each other. We are one of the few lake organizations who pr produce a news magazine. Although I remain a paper subscriber, I do enjoy the option of looking at articles digitally when I have forgotten to take the area news with me. We inform our members who are in email contact with e-blasts on breaking news, items of interest to our members. So please ensure that we have your current email address. Uh, finally, the committee has also initiated a review of how we handle member renewals with a view to better communication with our members. With our new database, we are now able to mine the database to develop better communication and membership strategies. Nominating committee consists of uh, Nancy Samuel Jervy, our past president and chair, uh, myself, uh, David Christie and Terry Fike. We met a number of times during the period of December 2019 to March 2020. The committee established criteria and assessed a slate of potential candidates. The criteria established included a desire to identify candidates in areas currently underrepresented, candidates on smaller lakes in the watershed, candidates with environmental, finance, or marketing experience, and candidates in a younger demographic, as well as candidates with influence in the watershed or in Winnipeg. Our bylaws state that the affairs of the corporation shall be managed by a board of directors consisting of not fewer than seven directors and not more than 17. The board has decided to fill three positions this year, holding four positions vacant to fill additional board positions with candidates that are a good match to our recruiting criteria. The nominating committee recommended the addition of Chelsea Lobson, Jeff Rempel, and Jackie Lowe to the board of directors. Chelsea Lobson is a program manager at the Lake Winnipeg Foundation in Winnipeg, where she has managed their community-based water monitoring network since 2017. Chelsea has a Bachelor of Science in Biology and a Master's of Science in Environmental Science, both from the University of Manitoba. Chelsea and her family began coming out to the Lake of the Woods in 2014. She's excited to work with Laotse to protect her favorite place on earth. Jeff is a third generation Lake of the Woods cottager, having spent countless summers at the family cottage on Pine Portage Bay. In 2017, Jeff and his wife, Nicole, purchased the family cottage and are looking forward to a lifetime of continuing to enjoy time spent at the lake. Jeff's home base is in Winnipeg, where he works as a chartered professional accountant and is an active member of the community, sitting on a number of not-for-profit boards. Jeff's interests on the Loudsa board include property tax issues, the proposed twinning of the Trans-Canada Highway, and environmental issues. Jackie Lowe is a retired senior vice president and general counsel of National Leasing Group Incorporated and a cottager on Gun Club Island. She has extensive experience on both corporate and non profit boards and brings a wealth of experience to Laudsa. Due to the COVID pandemic and delay in holding our AGM, these directors have already been very active in the work of your association. As a result of recent resignations of several board members due to personal commitments, we have several vacancies on the board. The nomination committee will be looking for additional candidates this year. Please consider applying for a position on the board. The following directors have completed their two-year term on the board and have agreed to serve a further two-year term, term. Dave Christie, Lucas King, Don Parfit, and myself. Three directors are in the second year of their two-year term, Garth Collier, Carly Fike, Christine Seminchuk, and Trevor Templeton. The following people, the new board members, have agreed to serve a two-year term, Chelsea Lobson, Jeff Rempel, and Jackie Lowe. I therefore move that the following persons be elected as directors of the association to hold office for a term of two years or until their successors are elected or appointed. Hardy Bach, Dave Christie, Lucas King, Chelsea Lobson, Jackie Lowe, Don Parfit, and Jeff Rempel. Could I have a seconder for this motion, please? Uh, Becky Slater. Thank you. I seconded that. Is there any discussion, questions to the motion? Good. 
we'll have an opportunity for another poll. It will take just a moment again. <laughs> Almost there. Okay, I'm going to end the poll now. Thank you, everybody. This is the nominating committee's recommended slate of directors for 2020 21. Uh, please welcome the new and returning members of your board. Christine Semenchuk has agreed to accept the position of president for your association after serving in the dual roles of treasurer and vice president for the past two years. Garth Collier has gratefully accepted the position of vice president and the treasurer role will be co-chaired by Carly Fike and Jeff Rempel. We have one more business item to do and we will be... Sorry. Oh. Wrong spot. There we go. Is the appointment of the accounting firm. So I would like to propose the following motion that BDO Canada LLP chartered accountants be appointed the accountants for the association to hold office until the next annual meeting of members at the remuneration to be fixed by the directors of the association. May I have a seconder for the motion? Rita Iyer has seconded that. Thank you, Rita. Any discussion? Questions? By the way, that's a, that's a real photo that's not photoshopped, taken with a crappy little camera off my deck at about two o'clock in the morning uh, over black sturgeon. And there's your results, Gordon. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, we can move to the next slide. So before we adjourn the business portion of our meeting, are there any questions one of your directors or I can answer for you? Um, as you can see on the slide there, uh, please put up your hand up icon on your screen and we'll ask you to voice your question live, just as you would in person by unmuting and turning on your video. Uh, and if you want to ask later, you can email at info at Um We have a question from Lisa Bernard. Thank you. Only seen part of the name. Shall I think Shelley already unmuted? TK, is that Thomas? Oh, oh yeah, Thomas. Thomas. Tommy, Tommy, by, by preference. Tommy, well, there we go. Yeah, I see uh, a lot of construction of some sort going on south of 17, just as I cross into Ontario. And I'd always assumed that had something to do with uh, the twinning project, but I gather from the discussion tonight not. So there's no progress being made on the twinning project at all? Well, we, um, we have been in communication with all the parties involved. Uh, there's been a, a bit of a change in personnel. Uh, also the, the focus of the Ontario government with COVID has changed the, um, I guess, um, urgency with which this wants to be done uh, or that it can be done. But at the moment, uh, there's nothing uh, is, not, there's no further developments. They, they are, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Don, uh, there, we haven't gotten any further than we were with, with when we were there at, uh, at the last meeting with them. That is correct. And I, I guess the question I have is exactly where is the construction going on? because it should not be uh, related to twinning. We've also written to the Manitoba government and, and to the extent that most of you folks are likely from Winnipeg, uh, I would suggest that you start putting a little pressure on the Manitoba side, because one of the issues that they had on the twinning of the, four, of the, of the Ontario portion is it would arrive at the border not knowing what Manitoba's plans were on the other side. So we've just recently sent off letters to our federal um, MP 
provincial MP, uh, Manitoba government, uh, trying to get an update. There's been various articles appearing in, in papers, et cetera, as to where it's at, but uh, nobody's confirming that. Uh, sort of the best thing we can get out of this is construction may start next summer, but we heard that five years ago, four <laughs> years ago, three years ago, two years ago. So I don't know what construction's going on there right now. Uh, thank you. I mean, I was just curious because they're just a, you know, hundred, hundred or two hundred yards after you cross into Ontario, there's that uh, truck turn off to the yes. to the south, and I had just naturally assumed that was something to do with the long-standing promise of of starting the twinning project. So I'm rather disappointed to hear that it's something else. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. The the uh, that's just a pullover in Ontario. They have them. Uh, for a long time, we were not advised of what was going on there, but uh, I've, I go to Winnipeg fairly frequently, and it's used quite extensively by the transports. And I think the no, no, this is this is before this comes before the the uh, before the uh, rest stop. This is uh, really? just and there's a there's a heavy there's a truck w turning warning sign there and um, some warnings about the power lines that they have over the little road but it's just a trail and i have seen once or twice uh you know uh heavy heavy construction type trucks going in or coming out but i have no idea what's going on back in there well there so, is a group sorry there I interrupt you there is a group working on a pipeline here uh and i don't know where the pipeline is there uh, okay they, they, just, be it. Uh, they just rented a space uh, on 596 here literally about a quarter mile from my house and it's summit pipelines, and they're here for about three to four months to do pipeline work. Yeah. Does that make sense? Is that where the uh, pipeline is? It it could be. I uh, I have no idea where the yeah the pipeline's probably south of the highway. The high pipeline is south of the highway there, so that could be pipeline construction. That could be then, yeah. But we will we're, we continue to push them. We continue to ask. We continue to sort of get stonewalled uh, as quickly as we hear anything. We'll let you know. Any other questions or concerns? Not seeing any hands up at this point. Oh. All right. Um, well, it's, uh, it's amazing that we managed to get this uh, to go, Diane, uh, thanks to you and Shelley's efforts. Um, I, had, I had a lot of anxiety about this, but the last 48 hours we've been working hard make this happen so um i guess uh i get to ask if uh, uh have a motion to adjourn the meeting todd sellers thank you todd um Thanks, todd. and our final slide is uh, just a thank you for your attendance and your continued interest in Lautsa. um pl please please talk up membership we're, we're, we really are struggling with this we've tried a number of different things um I think there's value in, in this organization. Uh, there's value in membership and the value comes in, in a, a number of different ways, but you've heard about them today, tonight. Uh, and the environmental committee is, is, is chaired by two very uh, active, informed individuals uh, who have a lot of environmental experience and they've pushed us to, uh, to get this mobile boat, boat wash going, despite all the COVID things, I was tending to go, oh, I don't know, we should do anything this year, but fortunately they pushed. And uh, I think it's a wonderful initiative. It's a great value for our, our members. Um, and uh, I, I really, I, I hope that you can, uh, that we can get the membership numbers up so we can, we can fund these programs. Um, I think uh, from what you just heard from, from Don Parfit, you know, uh, they, the, that government committee is very involved with multiple layer and uh, multiple levels of government from the municipal level all the way to the federal level. Uh, many of our government affairs committee members can uh, phone these people up and have a cup of coffee with them. They don't have to make an appointment with anybody and uh, they know them and uh, they've got uh, the interests of the association at hand. And again, another great value to, uh, to both being a member of Lautsa. Uh, and I know I'm speaking to the converted here because um, otherwise you wouldn't be here for the AGM. Um, but please, um, 
talk it up. Uh, I, I, if you belong to a local lake association like I do Blake, at Black Sturgeon, um, I'm hoping to uh, encourage the Black Sturgeon people to, uh, to say if they're members of Laotse and, and we can combine forces and, and, and do some great things in the watershed. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Thank you.